Hello again. This video is part two of the series giving tips and suggestions to new players. In the last video we covered basic leveling tips to get you on your way, so be sure to check out that video before we jump into this one. Now that we are ready to go into our first dungeon, there's a lot to talk about in terms of how they work. So with that, let's get started on part two, dungeons. Before we get started, you should know that you unlock your first dungeon through your story quest, and you will unlock the dungeon roulette which gives you bonuses for completing the dungeon at level 16. Throughout the world there are quests offered which open up more dungeons not related to the story that are fully optional. While not necessary to move forward in the game, it is sometimes a good idea to unlock these for additional experience options as you gain bonus experience the first time you complete a dungeon. In addition, each class will gain a bonus for the completion of any dungeon. You can use this bonus to gain a large amount of experience when leveling your later classes. For those unfamiliar with dungeons from other MMOs, a typical dungeon in Final Fantasy consists of four players, one tank, one healer, and two damage dealers. You can find out who is who by the icons next to their name red representing damage dealers, green representing healers, and blue representing tanks. The first most important thing we need to talk about is enmity, also known as threat. For the remainder of this video, we'll just call it threat to keep things simple. Threat is gained from using abilities that deal damage or heal. One point of damage equals one point of threat. However, one point of healing only equals half a point of threat. For damage dealers, you can simply know that every time you deal damage, that much threat is gained on the creatures that receive the damage. For healers, however, it's not so simple. Healing threat is half the heal received by your party in total, split evenly amongst all creatures you're engaged with. What this means is that, against a single target, a heal of 1000 gives 500 threat to that enemy, while against 5 targets, the same heal would give 100 threat to each. Tanks can gain bonus threat using some abilities, whether they deal damage or not, and by default generally gain more threat per hit while using certain buffs. While you are in a party, you can use a couple of interface displays to monitor your threat on a single target and multiple targets. Your single target threat is displayed near your party interface next to each member, represented by a white bar and a number corresponding to the order of that target's threat, with the top threat represented by the letter A for aggro. Keep in mind, some creatures ignore threat and attack who they wish, so this is not always an accurate list. For multiple targets, a new interface will appear showing all creatures engaged in combat. They will be assigned a letter representing the creature and also show an icon that changes its shape and color based on threat. A red square means you have top threat, an orange triangle means you are close to top threat, a yellow triangle means you have medium threat, and a green circle means you are engaged but have very low threat. It is important for each member of the party to take responsibility for managing their own threat. Damage dealers should allow tanks enough time to build it up before engaging, and healers should be mindful of how much threat they are gaining. Healers should also keep in mind that overhealing still counts as threat, so try not to heal those who don't need it. Finally, if you do pull threat on a creature, it is usually best not to run away from it and instead stay still or move towards the tank. It will be easier for them to pick up loose enemies if they do not have to chase them, as many skills have minimum ranges. And one final note for tanks is to level up a gladiator to level 22 in order to learn the cross skill Provoke. It is crucial for all tanks to have this ability as it allows you to gain top threat instantly. I'll cover jobs and cross-class abilities more in another video, but know for now that this is definitely what you want to go for. The next thing you should be aware of is the pace of the dungeon. The tanks are generally the ones who set the pace of the dungeon, and it is good practice to let them be the ones to pull the creatures. The tank knows how much they can handle, and pulling for them may lead to them dying, which in turn slows everyone down. Patience is a virtue in dungeons, and generally, if you do not have at least 30 minutes to dedicate to completing a dungeon, you should probably not do one until you have that time. Loot in a dungeon will show in a separate interface on your screen. It is good to know that some of these items are unique, meaning you can only carry one of them on your character at a time, and many of the items are untradeable. If you are with a friend and you want to let them have loot, you will have to pass on that item, as when you win it, you will not be able to give it to them afterward. This does, however, not apply to all items, and you can find this information on the item itself, written above the item's name as unique and untradeable if it applies. 
Finally, in dungeons, it is your responsibility to know the mechanics of any boss fight. If you are new to a dungeon, it is best that you say so and ask for tips on each encounter. Early on, encounters are simple and have very few things to watch for, but at higher levels, simple mistakes can lead to your death and ultimately the group failing to complete the boss fight. There is no shame in not knowing the encounter, and more often than not, you will find players willing to lend you the information you need. To finish this guide, I'll give some basic tips on how to improve your play while in dungeons. For tanks, managing your cooldowns is your top priority. Use them in succession over all at once. You will keep your incoming damage lower for a longer period of time. It is also a good idea to use cooldowns on trash, as it is one of the few times you are taking multiple hits at once and the damage can get a little intense. For damage dealers, while doing high damage is crucial, it is second to avoiding damage. The old saying is a dead damage dealer does no damage, so take the moment to avoid the damage when you can, even if it means you lose damage because of it. Finally, for healers, while keeping everyone healed is your job, avoiding damage is just as important. Try not to stand in harm's way to finish a cast, because if you die, so does everyone else. Avoid that hit and heal in safety. One final tip is to keep up with your guild hests. You gain a bonus for completing them, just as you do with dungeons, and you unlock more by completing them. So those are things you should know for dungeons. I hope you find it useful, and again, if you haven't seen part 1, you can click the link to head there. It covers leveling tips for new players. If you want to see more of these guides, you can subscribe. I'll be posting a new video each week covering more topics. Also, if you think this video is helpful, share it with friends and family. Finally, if you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them in the comment section below or post on my Twitter. I respond to them as much as I can, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.